Hi everyone. Happy New Year. I hope you're having a great New Year. I hope it's off to a great start. And I just wanted to come on really quick because I had the chance to listen to the other... I had the chance to listen to another interview that was taken, I believe it was on the 22nd or the 23rd of August, of The Mistress. I don't know. I mean, I've listened to this one earlier and I don't even know how I listened to it again, to be honest. But I did manage to do it and it just, it's so infuriating to me because, first of all, it's so obvious that she's trying to act so dumb. I'm not saying she's the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm saying that the act she's putting on is just ridiculous. And I would have such a hard time with it because I'm one of these people, you know, that meme that goes around and it says, even if I, you know, bite my tongue or shut my mouth or something, my eyes are going to give me away. I wouldn't be able to, 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 do, to do it with her. I really wouldn't because when she says some of the things that I'm going to tell you about, I would just be like, are you serious? Are you serious going, you're going to tell me that seriously? Okay. And... The detective that was interviewing her, you know, he would laugh like, I, I don't know, I think, okay, he could have been trying to make her feel really at ease. He did introduce her to Tammy and to Stacy, and then she spoke to Hazel at uh, one point who helps with getting mental health care for victims. She spoke to her for a little bit, but she really wasn't like that into it. I don't know if you guys have listened to the, the audio interview of the mistress, and I think it, it was definitely before this. And it was very long, and all of the footage, footage, all of the feed that I could find of this, they all said full version, right? But then when you listen to it, it was always cut off at the end. You always knew there was more. And so I don't know why I didn't go in there before. Maybe I did, and I just don't even remember. But I got the rest of the discovery about that. So... Before we go into this, I'm just going to go over that because this is, um, you don't hear this in that interview. So let's go to the week of the 13th. Okay, this is the day that they're reported missing, right? That Shanann and the kids are reported missing. And this is, again, transcribed, okay? So that's what we're going to be reading now because I can't find any of her own uh, audio on this. So the mistress is saying that, you know, we, she got the call or something from Chris that Nikki called the police. Nikki insisted they call the police. And he, Chris, believed that Shanann had just gone to a friend's house and would be back tomorrow. This is good. Okay. So Chris apparently tells the mistress that he's going to work tomorrow, which was Tuesday the 14th. She says, no, you shouldn't go to work. You should be home helping the police. He says, well, I don't want Shanann to see my truck. And she said, well, park it somewhere else. Okay, there's, okay. So when we all say she was at the house or whatever and she would just park her car somewhere else, right away, she knows park it somewhere else, right? Okay, park it somewhere else, she says. And she says, have a friend with you at the house in case... You get into it when she gets back. And if that friend can't be there and you get into it, turn your phone on and record it. Okay, so she's a schemer, huh? Okay, and now the mistress is saying that Chris told her that his, according to her, okay, because this is not what he told investigators or anything, he said, well, partially, but you'll, you'll see where it's, it's changed that Shanann had gotten in Sunday night and had asked Chris to wake her up when he was um, going off to work or something. So that was around 4 o'clock that he woke her up. And get this one, guys, get this one. He said, Shanann asked him to wake her up. So he woke her up. And he said when she got up, she was really mean. And she told Chris that she was pregnant. I'm sorry. 
she, yeah, so it's apparently, according to the mistress, Chris found out that she was pregnant right then and there that day. Mm -hmm. And the mistress says, then she said, and the baby's not yours. Mm -hmm. And then the mistress says that Chris played it like he just found out that Shanann was pregnant that very day, even though the woman is 15 weeks pregnant, she says. She asked Chris if she, she asked Chris if he believed that Shanann was pregnant because she didn't find out until Tuesday in the media coverage that Shanann was pregnant, 15 weeks pregnant. And Chris says she was showing in North Carolina. Now, the mistress says Chris is saying all of this stuff to lie to her and protect their relationship, not him and his wife him and his mistress. He never told her what time the argument started. Now the mistress says Chris's story seemed believable to her. She said he thought that Shanann said she was pregnant out of spite. And at this time, the mistress just thought Shanann left the house with her children on her own accord. She says he never asked his mistress to come to his house. The mistress told investigators she didn't have an access code for the home security system. Now, let's go back a little bit because I'm sorry, this discovery is so mumble jumbled. So they discussed the, with the detective and with the mistress, they discussed a phone call between the mistress and Chris between 9 and 11 p.m. on that Sunday night, the 12th. She was not certain what they talked about during that two hour conversation. She recalled hearing a television set on in the call. So here's that call we talked about the other day and I wasn't sure but I thought it was this night and the reason she made such a big deal about the television is because it shows he wasn't laying in bed like he usually does and he was waiting up for her which you know I guess she thinks is putting her in the clear of everything so that's why she's insisting, you know, this the television was playing and that's what's going on. But she doesn't remember what they talked about for two hours. She said she knew there wasn't a television in the basement, so she didn't know where he was or what he was watching. And I guess, you know, she couldn't ask him what you're watching. TV's on loud. <laughs> Can't sleep. I guess she couldn't, two hours, she couldn't find out what he was watching. She says it's so late. Nine to eleven. Hmm. Okay. She recalled thinking that he must be up waiting for Shanann to come home. And it was during this call that he told his mistress that the next day he had to go to the field and not to the office. He said he had to go check a valve where there was a release. And he said he would not see her in the morning. She said this is not uncommon, but typically he goes to the office first. She said usually three to four days a week he goes to the office. Listen, listen to this. I don't know if any of you have ever heard that. The mistress said that she said that she said that Chris had never told her about his bankruptcy. She couldn't think of any reason why Chris would hurt his children. The only thing she could think of is that maybe the kids saw him killing Shanann, so he killed them too. She said Chris loved his children. This time the investigator inquires about a text message the mistress had with her closest friend Charlotte, and he says that in a text there was a reference to dating someone, having a relationship with a man. And it didn't specifically say that man was Chris. So he's saying, you know, would, could Chris have seen this message and thought you were dating someone else? And he made an eHarmony reference to the mistress, which she could never understand. She said she was on a site like that once and never worked out for her. And so she didn't know what he saw and she could never find any message referring to that. And she said that she had never dated any other person and that Chris would have no reason to believe that she was dating anyone else. She also said that Chris was never jealous about her seeing anyone else. Now, if she had never dated anyone else, did she threaten him? Did, how would she know he was not jealous of her seeing anyone else? Wouldn't you just say that never came up and he wasn't a jealous guy? That's just a weird thing to say. She says she had talked to other men on eHarmony, but never ended up dating any of them. Now, Agent Tim Martinez asked 
questions to the mistress, and she stated the following to him. She said, Chris was always more into me than I was into him. She said that they had discussed long-term plans. Get this one. She asked him if he didn't have the big house, what would his house look like? And Chris said he would have a smaller ranch house. And they agreed together that they would have more of a simple life. But remember, this is in a serious relationship, right? Hmm. She said that she and Chris talked about marriage offhandedly, and they were not deep conversations. I wonder how much time she would spend looking for a wedding dress if it was a deep conversation. She said that Chris never complained of any medical issues, and she never thought he had any type of psychological or mental illnesses. On Tuesday the 14th, the date is wrong here in the discovery because it says the 13th. Tuesday the 14th, she asked Chris multiple times where his family was. She said he answered multiple times that he didn't know. And he had a friend, Dave, who was a policeman. He asked Dave to sit outside his house and Dave agreed to do it. He told her that his friend, Nick, was coming by his house. She said she never heard of a Dave, but she knew now that Dave was involved in this investigation. On her lunch break, the mistress reviewed the media reports about missing Shanann and children and found out that Shanann was 15 weeks pregnant. She said that Chris asked her if this ruins everything now with their relationship and she told him to concentrate on finding his family. She said that she knew the child was his and not from an affair that Shanann had. She continued to encourage him to go find his family. What a sweet girl. She confronted him to stop lying. She said on Tuesday she began to get a little suspicious of Chris. She said he didn't seem to be as concerned as he should be about his family, and he was more concerned with their relationship. She doesn't believe Chris ever went to go look for his family. Well, he knew exactly where they were. So this discovery is not making a lot of sense, okay? Monday's when they went missing, and Monday they announced it was, a, you know, she was pregnant. So she found out on Monday, even though she said she got home at 3.45 on Monday, and that's when Jim was there. In the report it says she found out on Tuesday in the media. And it was released before that. And then it says on Monday night she confronted him about the pregnancy. So this discovery is just a piece of work here. On Monday night she called him and he was sleeping. And she found this strange because his family was missing. Okay, so she challenges Chris about... Shanann being pregnant, and I know, we know from the last time, remember she said he said that it wasn't his, it wasn't his baby, and she said, oh, I know it's your baby, and it's okay, and then he admitted it was his baby. He kept asking her, she said, if their relationship was still okay, even though the baby was his. She said he expressed concern for his wife and his children during this conversation, or during these text messages, I'm sorry text messages. Now listen to this one. She asked Chris to delete his text messages to keep their relationship a secret from his friends. And she told him to contact her after his family is found. Now, I just want to let you guys know something. At the end of any questioning they bring this mistress into, it clearly states, nothing further investigation continues. Here we go again to Tuesday, but I think she's got her Mondays and her, she's got everything all mixed up. She did not recall at all about speaking with Chris. She didn't recall speaking with Chris on the phone, just texting with him on Tuesday. And she said on Tuesday, she began to get a little suspicious of Chris. Okay, listen to this now. The mistress says she questions Chris as to what he had done. And he said he, he's done nothing. And she texted Chris. Now, we don't see any of these texts that we're talking about. And I'll go back to those missing texts in just a little bit. But she says she texted Chris if he did something bad, it's going to ruin his life and her life. And Chris responded he had not hurt his family. And that was the last text she said that they had between the two of them on Tuesday. Now she said at this time she started to really believe that he had hurt his family. She said she really began to think he had hurt his family because she said that he had lied to her and Shanann had not returned. She said she got really scared because she didn't know who Chris was anymore. She recalled another conversation from the Monday the 13th where she said Shanann had left her wedding ring at home. She said Chris asked her how much did she think the ring was worth. She responded by telling him to pawn it. He said he was going to go get the ring appraised. 
Remember that on the 13th, she thought Shanann was missing. But she tells, and she thought, no biggie on the 13th, right? She said that she thought, you know, she just went away. Um, and I'll, she saw say it again in another, in the other interview I'll talk to you about, that it was no biggie on the 13th. She thought she'd be back the next day. But she tells him to go pull on her ring. Why would she tell him that if she thought his wife was going to be back the next day? Hmm. Something seems a little off, do you think? She also goes on to mention that after North Carolina, that it was Shanann that wanted the divorce, the separation and the divorce. She also goes back to say that after their trip to North Carolina, he told her that Shanann is the one that wants the separation and the divorce. She saw that media interview after Shanann and the kids were reported missing, the one he did on his porch and then in his driveway, and she said his eyes looked different. And he looked like he didn't have a soul, and he looked like a different man. She said she spoke with her father about the situation. He said, we better get on down to the police department. She said she really wishes she had come in a few days sooner, but it took her a lot to process the situation. She said that Chris had never said anything during any of these conversations about hurting his wife or children, and he had never done so before. She doesn't believe that he just snapped. She doesn't believe that she is the catalyst for this, but she does believe that being in Chris's life may have accelerated this process. She said Chris and Shanann did not get along well, and their financial life was troubling. She said Chris was struggling with finances, and now he had a third baby on the way. And she doesn't know if they could afford another kid. You know, they should have consulted her, because she would have found it out. She does that homework that she does, you know. She's really good, really good with those finances. She said she was told that Shanann just wasn't even responsive to the financial trouble. She wasn't even, you know, she didn't really care. The mistress said, Chris told her he always wanted a third child and he always wanted a boy. And she said that she is very financially stable. And Chris never knew women like her existed. In the end, she said she feels that money is the biggest catalyst for this event happening. This event, the murder of a pregnant mother and two little girls is an event. All right, now let's go back to the interview she had with investigators. I believe it was on the 22nd. It was after she was fired from Anandarko and fired from the consulting firm that she worked for, that she was hired as a, con you know, she was contracted by Anandarko. So she was fired not only from Anandarko, but she was fired by, she was fired not only from Anandarko, but she was fired from the company that she worked for where they contracted her out. Okay, so she goes to this interview. She's got her hair up in a ponytail. She looks tired, stressed. She comes in with two cell phones. She can't figure out what the heck, you know, all of a sudden now, now watch, this is like not tech savvy. She's talking to herself. Um, so she's got the two cell phones on the table and she's trying to do something and the investigator comes in and she says, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Verizon, can you believe this? They gave me a piece of paper. They gave me a piece of paper that I have to follow. I have to follow instructions on how to get my contacts off the one phone and get them onto the other phone. And I can't even follow this. I can't even find the app store. So he goes, are you using an Android? Yes, I can't even find the app store. Can you help me? They didn't even help me. He says, let me get my IT guy on it, okay? So he's in and out of the room and she's kind of still looking at these phones and she's, you know, just huffing and puffing and sighing and everything is, oh my gosh, they give me a piece of paper. They expect me to follow instructions. So she's really upset. So then he comes back in and he tells her, we're going to get the IT guy and you know, sit down and, you know, just relax for a second. And then in comes Tammy and Stacy, and they have a brief introduction and they go on their way. And then he starts to speak with her, okay, about uh, why she came in because she remembered, she remembered something. Okay, so she's whining, okay, the whole time. And, and, the, and the investigator is kind of trying to be cute with her, but it's, you know, it's a little, it really turned me off because he's laughing and he's like, you know, you don't know whether he's just trying to do that to make her think she's getting to him or she's really getting to him, okay? 
So she's going, he's going, what? I didn't know. I don't know. I can't find the app store. I don't know. I'm so tired. I don't know. I mean, you know, and she's just doing that thing she normally does that is so freaking aggravating, okay? So she's whining and whining about these phones. He says, I'm going to get the IT guy for you to see if they can help you. And in walks Tammy and Stacy. And he introduces her to them. They shake hands. And then Tammy says, oh, I just wish Tammy could have questioned her. Because she goes, how you doing? And right away, the... The male investigator says, she's stressed. She says, whew, you look stressed. I don't think she liked that too much. And that's why I said, I really wish that this Tammy had been questioning this one, okay? So, you know, she wouldn't be having little giggles with her because she would, when I tell you, like, the things she said, she'd be right on top of it. So she says something like, well, are you, get, are you getting your therapy? Have you have your therapy lined up or something? And she and then the investigator says, well, he says, we're waiting for Weld County to approve the paper because this is a unusual request because she's not an eyewitness and it's an unusual request. And then the board has to approve it. Well, what they have to approve is to pay for her therapy. Now, remember guys, a lot of people were saying she's so wealthy, her dad's so wealthy. Well, I guess daddy can't afford therapy, and so they're waiting for the board of, the, you know, the, the county and the board to sign off and get her some therapy. Apparently, she doesn't have any insurance either. Now, I know she was fired from her job, but there's usually... A co you know, some type of insurance uh, so you're not just left without insurance, right? And uh, Daddy, I thought Daddy was so wealthy, but I guess not. Because his daughter needs mental health and, you know, she can't go. And I I don't know what's going on there. So she's so, they're both, the, both the ladies are like, oh, okay. And then the investigator says to them, you know, it's, it's a rare case because she's not an eyewitness to get this approved. We don't even know if they're going to approve it. She starts talking about the phones again. I have so many numbers. I have so many numbers in these phones. And you know what? With all the, oh gosh, with all the media, with all the media contacts, you know, contacting me, I, I can't just change over a bunch of unknown numbers or I can't do that because I won't know you know, who's calling, and she's, she's all upset about this, and she's talking about the media, and how she's, um, she's been uh, staving them off, you know, for four days, for four days now. And then he goes to her, hey, you said when you turned on your old phone that you got some texts from, from you and Chris? You got some texts that came up? Yeah, so, that's great, you know, like, so where are they from? And she, and she goes, listen to this one. Yeah, I, I did, but I don't know what's wrong. There's something wrong with them. You know why? Because they're like, they're scrambled, they're out of order, and they're missing a lot. Like, you'll see, they don't really make sense. Um, not at all. Like, and there's stuff missing. And you know what's even worse? They're, they have the date on them, but that's not really the date that it occurred. Like, there's one that says it happened on the 13th, and it really didn't happen then. And how, at this point, I'm like, how convenient. Really? Really, they're missing stuff, and now, even though the dates say what they do on them, you mean those aren't the real dates? Because maybe those messages like, wow, they really would have freaked, that says it's on the 13th, is not on the 13th, is what she was saying at this point, okay? And all of these are missing, and I don't know what happened. I hope I'm not in any trouble. Am I in trouble? I hope I'm not in any trouble. I, you know, I, I deleted them just because I just wanted to get him off my phone. He lied to me. I want, I, I, don't know, I hope I'm not going to get in trouble. Am I going to get in trouble? And then he says, now I understand, you know, what you're saying, why you deleted them, but, you know, we really need to get those texts back. We really need to get those back. So he says, okay, so are you going to just, you know, sign this waiver that we can take everything off your phone? And immediately she goes, I don't know why you need my phone. Why do you need everything on my phone? What do you need everything on my phone for? Why can't you just take his number? You know, just take whatever came from his number. So he says, 
you know, it's much easier if we could just take everything on the phone because you know those two women that came here, I'm not the only one working this case, and we don't know what they're going to need in the future. And not everyone knows everything that's going on, so they may have something that I don't know is going on, and they may need something else from your phone. So it's just really easier if we have all of it at our disposal so we can get whatever we need, and it's also easier to do searches and things instead of just putting a certain date range, because she wanted to limit it to a date range and he said okay the critical days the most critical days are like the 10th through the 13th and then um, she was saying well why can't you just take like something from July through through what do you so finally she agrees to let you know him have the phone but I think she's already done something with this phone okay and I think see this is where I just I don't trust this woman at all. She's in there and I think it's all for show that she's playing. She can't even get her contacts from one phone to another even with a paper from Verizon. Okay? I think the reason she's doing that is to make this investigator think she is so incompetent. Okay? She can't figure this out at all. Okay? She can't figure it out. So if she can't figure that out, did she ever figure out how to load something on her phone that would scramble up text messages or, you know, permanently do something to them? How could she ever do that? Because she can't even get contacts from one phone to the next phone. She would never be capable of doing something like that. That's exactly what I think this whole entire act is for. And I think she darn well did something to that phone because she kept saying... I don't know. What do you think could have happened? Because, like, I don't know. Why didn't they come back? And why are they scrambled and they're missing stuff? Oh, gosh, am I going to get in trouble? I, oh, boy. Oh, I was, yet the only reason I deleted them, I was just so mad, so hurt. He lied to me. I didn't know this was going to happen. Do you know how this could have happened? How could this happen? And... He's just saying, well, I don't know, we'll see, maybe somebody else can get something off, um, we have another program, maybe we can put on it. And she goes, oh, I got so excited, I got so excited when I thought the text messages were there and they were restored, I got so excited for you guys, and then I saw they weren't. So they're all scrambled, they don't make sense, you could see there's huge gaps missing, she's saying, and the dates don't even seem to be correct, and nothing makes sense, and there's so much missing. So he goes out to get the, I um, get the IT guy right, and in the meantime he says, "There's something else you had to tell me, right? Besides that, you thought you got these messages restored." And she says, "Oh yeah, I can't. Oh gosh, I can't remember. I can't. Oh, I can't remember my mind." And he's like, "Okay, look, you told me a lot of stuff. Maybe you just need to take a few days and just not think about anything because you're not remembering things too well. And we've already got a lot here to go on. We're gonna do the phone." And he says, you take a few minutes to remember, I'm going to go get the IT guy. And then you see her in the, you know, in the interview room and she goes something like, she starts talking to her son, she goes, I, I got it, right? And then he walks in and she goes, I got it, I remembered it, what I had to tell you. And so he walks in with the IT guy, who's also an agent there, right? And the IT guy sits down, and they're, like, telling him what he has to do with the phone. And she's like, oh, she goes through the whole thing with the text messages. I don't know how they, they're not recovering. You know, they're not, they're not recovered, and there's all this stuff missing. I don't know what's going on. I can't, can you figure out how to get my contacts over? Because I can't do it. And Verizon gave me a piece of paper. She goes through that whole thing again, okay? So then the, the other agent says, okay, so what did you remember? Oh, um you want to talk about this now? And he goes, yes, he, he's an agent. And then the IT guy that's the, the other agent says, do you want me to go out? And she's like, no, no, it's, you know, it's okay. I don't know. Okay, um, listen to what she remembered. You know what a fire stick is? And at first the one agent's like, no. And then she, he goes, wait, you mean like an Amazon fire stick? And she's like, yeah, yeah, you know what a fire stick is? And he goes, yeah, okay. And she goes, well, you know, Chris, when I was going to find him the apartment, okay, 
She goes, because I was helping him, remember? Because he came back from North Carolina and he said, everybody, Shanann was all ready. It was her um, idea. She was calling the realtor. They were going to put the house on the market, remember? And I told him, you know what? what? What's your plan? What's your plan, bud? Because this house is buyer's market. It's going to sell really fast. You've got to have another place. So I was like just spending time after work, you know, a few hours and um, searching for apartments and sending them to him and then I even have this one here because I really liked it so I sent it to myself but no she wasn't looking to move in the apartment right it was so nice at a pool it had this it had that and then when we went out on when they went to the lazy dog she said that he had said prior to that he would go look at some of these apartments that coming week and then all of a sudden she said seemed like you know Wynn was out of his sales. He wasn't as enthusiastic about it. He wasn't looking to do this. He was, you know, she could see that he was like dragging his heels on it. And so she said, well, you know, I wasn't going to push him. I was doing it to help him. But I was like saying, is something wrong? Do you, are you still going to go see them? You know, you could just say no. Why can't you just say no? Why couldn't you just say no if he didn't want to go do it? Um, and so the investigator saying, so you know, what's the significance of this? And she said, I don't know, maybe he knew something else? And I think what she was trying to say is that she wants the investigator to think, okay, he's going to off his family, and so her and him can move in that house, and we know she's, you know, much more financially stable, so they'll be fine, and he doesn't need an apartment. So anyway, she's talking about these apartments, and she says... Well, on, I think it was Sunday, he was talking about the Amazon Fire Stick, and he was saying, you know, I think I'm going to get rid of uh, cable TV and get an Amazon Fire Stick. And she thought that was pretty good because he looked like he was looking to save money. But we know, because she says Shanann called the realtor, right? Shanann called the realtor not because she was going through a separation and they were selling the house. Shanann called the realtor because they were going to downsize and reduce their monthly budget. And he had the Fire Stick because, and Shanann knew about it, because you can see the text message where she said, do you still want the NFL package? And he said, let me see what the fire stick can do. And they were both looking to save money. But this one here thinks the fire stick is really significant because it means that he's looking to save money and showing, you know, he's thinking and, and then that he's enthusiastic again about this move. And so the investigator says to her, okay, is, is that it? Um, where is this, like, and basically, what is the significance of this? And she says, oh, because it seemed like, you know, he was getting more enthusiastic about the move now since he was looking to save money. He looked like, he, you know, he was moving in that direction again. And then she said, but, you know, I tried, like, pressing him about the apartments and was he going to go see one? And he told me that, he saw one, and he said it was around $1,100, and it had all these amenities, and she said, wow, that's cheaper than what I pay. Wow, and it's got all those things, and it's close, you know, to the gym. And she goes, you know, I had looked at everything in there, so I just asked him, what was the name of it? Because I know, I know them all. So, he, But he couldn't tell me the name of it, and she found that really um, strange, okay, because, you know, she should know every, everything. And she said, like, he kind of blew her off, so she didn't know if it was real or not, and, and why he was doing that. That was the significance of what she had to tell him. She goes on to tell them that, you know, she's usually pretty tech-savvy. And then, as if, stupid, why did I say that? I'm pretty tech-savvy, right? Because she goes, I'm usually pretty tech-savvy. And then she goes, she backtracks it, okay? And she says, oh, you know... So maybe I'm not as tech savvy as I thought. Maybe I'm not so tech savvy. Oh, and then when they said why they needed her phone, the another reason they needed her phone, they told her, well, we need to get the GPS off your phone. We need to know your location. We need to know where you were. That's why we need your whole phone. We just don't just want you to specify, you know, a, a, a date range for us. We, we want to see your phone. So then she goes on to say that she's been talking to her friends. 
Her name has not come out in the paper at this point, okay? She looks every day to see if it has. And it almost sounds like she's a little disappointed in a way. But she says that she calls her friends and she says, listen to this one. She has this like down patch, kept repeating this thing. I'm safe. I didn't break any laws. Nothing's wrong. If the media calls, please say no comment. Can you even imagine getting a call like that from a friend of yours? You know, and this is what she said. She was calling friend after friend and telling them this. And then she says, am I going to get in trouble for that? Is it okay that I talk to them? Is it, is it okay? I, di I didn't say what it was. I just said that, um, you know, just don't, just don't give anyone a comment. Just say no comment because, um, you know, just say that. I, and, and I'm safe. I didn't break any laws. I told them. So she, so they, so the cop had said, well, why did you go contacting them? And she says, oh, they contacted me. You know, they started blowing up my phone saying the media was calling them, okay? So then I had to go back and do that. And she goes, and then I told my dad, and my dad said, we got to go do some damage control. I told a few of her close friends, a couple of her close friends, to take all the pictures of them off of Facebook and then take all the public posts and, you know, make them private. So then he goes to Charlotte. Now remember Charlotte's, she goes, ho, oh, and she, she was a really good friend. She kept muttering something like, oh, you know, my friend Charlotte, oh, she's crazy. She it was like something she was saying that wasn't nice. And then the cop would chuckle. I'm like, oh, good friend. Okay. I'm sure Charlotte's really loving seeing that police interview and what her friend really thinks of her. Right? So she says, I believe she got like upset with me because when I called her to say no comment to the media, her father died at that time and so she got like really upset with me and then she goes to him but don't worry I don't think Charlotte's connecting any dots I don't think she's connecting any dots they haven't mentioned my name there and I don't think she's connecting any dots here we catch her in a lie right here okay she says that Charlotte is too concerned with her father Okay, she's not connecting any dots. She says, don't worry about Charlotte. She's not connecting any dots. I don't think she knows anything about me connected to what's come out in the paper with this guy. And I don't think she's put two and two together. I don't think she's fully processed it, you know, that I'm in any way, shape, or form connected to this. Even though I'm calling all of my friends and telling them, if the media calls you, please give them no comment. I didn't break any laws. I'm safe. Okay, she goes, I, I think she's just too consumed with her father. And she's like really like upset with me because she wants me to come to the wake. And, you know, I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to go, but I'm not going to say that I'm going to go just in case anybody's looking for me. And, you know, and, and then the investigator's like, I don't think anybody's looking for you. This is the time to go out now. I don't think anybody knows your name. I don't think anybody knows anything about you. There's no reason you shouldn't go to the wake. There's no reason you shouldn't go out to dinner with your friend or whatever and um, enjoy yourself, okay? The media is all over. They're hounding me. So after she says, I don't think Charlotte connected the dots, they go through those text messages from Charlotte where she's talking about Chris to her. And she says, well, that was weeks ago. And I, you know, I just said that he was married and he had kids. And I think she said he was going through the separation or whatever. And the detective kept saying, in any of those messages, did you ever say that those children bothered you or that you wish he didn't have children or that you wanted, you know, to be rid of those children? No, 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 no. And he kept saying, you know, because that would be something if I would find stuff like that on there or to Chris or anything about if he didn't have kids or if he didn't have the, you know, that would be something that would be very significant. And so, oh, no, 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 I always talked about, um, no, I talked about his kids, you know, I, I just was saying, like, in general, in general, because I didn't know, like, how serious the relationship was, okay? Um, most of the stuff I said to her was really flattering. And he goes, yeah, you said, look, he's a little, he's kind of short. And he starts to chuckle, and she's like, and she said something like, oh, well, he didn't see that or something. I'm wondering how Chris's mother would like that. But anyway, so she said most of the stuff I said was flattering, but I just wasn't sure if I wanted to start fresh, you know, because he had already done all this and, you know, eventually I'm going to want kids. 
and and he already did this and and the investigator says it's not that you said something like I'll always come second in his life didn't you say something like you'll always come second in his life no 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 didn't say it no mm -mm. no nope. mm -mm. are you sure you didn't say that yeah no 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 nope it's not there it's not there yeah I was just mentioning just like just like a matter of fact, like, I don't know if he was the guy of my dreams. I don't know that. So I'm just saying, like, it, it was kind of weighing my options. Like, do I want to do that or do I want to start fresh with somebody that's never had kids and, and do it for the first time together? You know, I, 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 that's what I was saying. She says, he says, you didn't say anything like he's got two kids and I don't like that. Um, and she goes, oh, no. She goes, no. I said, you know, I... I, I don't know. He's, I don't know if he's the man of my dream. And I want my own kids. I want my own marriage. And then he says to her, did you send Charlotte a picture? Because she's answering you in a text here that says, he's handsome. And she's like, deer in headlights. Uh, oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Like uh, two minutes ago, she's saying, Charlotte's never going to know, connect it. But she sends him a picture of, of Chris and Charlotte goes, so she goes, yeah, and he goes, well, I don't see it here, and she goes, oh, yeah, that must have got deleted with all of the pictures I deleted from my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get in trouble for deleting those, you know, because I only did it because I deleted all the pictures because I, 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 he lied to me. He, he lied to me. I just wanted it off. He kept asking her in so many different ways. Did you ever say you didn't want those kids? No, even when I would see cute things, like I would do like, oh, that's so cute. And you know what? Oh my gosh. Anytime he showed me pictures of them, they were so cute. They reminded, they reminded me of myself. I don't look anything like you, honey. They reminded me of myself because, you know, I was that age when my parents got divorced. And you know what? It was, you know, it was, remember, she's the expert now. She had told him, oh, and then we got to move, you know, with her dad. And remember, they're going to get the bunk beds. And she, she's like, no, I really, oh, I thought it was great because they remind me so much of myself. And, you know, that's the age I was when my parents got divorced. I felt like we had something in common. So with her father, she did this damage control, okay? So they called all these people. They said, get everything off Facebook, put everything to private get rid of any public posts, get rid of any posts related to her, get rid of any pictures with her in them, clean it up, scrub that social media. She said that Charlotte said that Chris looked like her ex. She didn't even, or, or either that, okay, it's not clear whether she saw Chris in the paper and said she looks like her ex, meaning Charlotte's ex, or the picture that this mister sent to her, she looked like the ex. She goes, but she's so wrapped up in her father's death, she's not processing any of this, it's okay. So then he's asking to see more of the text messaging between her and Charlotte, right? So they're going through them, and then she's like, oh, oh, yeah, well this is what she says right here. Now, this is, this is what I mean with the lies. Doesn't she understand? She goes, oh, here, this is the only thing she said about it. But I don't think she's processed it. Look, man, I know you worked at Ann and Darko. And he did too. He murdered his wife and kids. He needs to go to jail. And I know you have a good heart. I don't care if you're going to lose your job over an open investigation. I know you don't want this published. I know if you say anything in the case, it could cause a mistrial. F the media. I just want my best friend. And then she goes, I didn't say anything about a trial, okay? I mean, I'd say, you just said she wasn't even going to put two and two together. And now she definitely did. Or there's something really wrong with you. Because if you don't think that's putting two and two together, what do you think that is? And then she goes on to say that the girl wants her to come to the father's wake, right? So she says, if you're not under investigation, why can't you come to the wake? Are you on house arrest? Well, she's not putting two and two together, is she, guys? And she said, I'm going to go, but I'm not going to tell her that I'm going to go. But but I'll, I'll go. And then she goes back to North Carolina again. Okay? She goes, I can't remember if he was still in North Carolina or if it happened when he was getting back. But he told me that Shanann 
had, you know, agreed to the whole divorce and everything, and everything was good. They were going to put the house on the market, and everything was going to go fine. She said, I, I can't remember if this happened on the phone, or, or, or I, I don't remember when this happened, when, when he told her this. She said, work on things, t you know, make sure everything that you really don't want to uh, save your marriage. I wanted to know that you were doing this because this is what you wanted to do and has nothing to do with me. She goes, ah. I really wanted them to fix this. I would have left the situation. But she said, nope. He said, nope. She called the realtor and she goes, damn, that was fast. Yeah, she called the realtor, but not for the reason you think. And then she began to go in motion that he needs to get a plan. You hear that word plan? You need to get a plan in place right away because your house is going to sell. You've got to get an apartment. You've got to get this plan together right away. And then, like I told you all about the apartments, she was finding things. And then on the 11th, when they went out, he wasn't so gung-ho about the whole idea. And she said, I can't remember. I know we were outside when he told me, and I could see that he wasn't as enthusiastic. I didn't know why. I think we were outside. Maybe we were on our way into the restaurant. I just remember we were outside. It's so hard for this girl to remember. And this good friend, you know, told her, you know, whether I can come or not, it's not going to bring your dad back. Very compassionate friend, isn't she? And she mumbled like two times in the interview something about her friend being crazy or unhinged or, or something, okay? Really nice. And then she had the audacity to before, right? Before he found that text, she said, I'm not going to tell Charlotte anything. If she figures it out, she figures it out. Knowing that Charlotte already texted her that thing and she figured it out. This girl can't tell the truth to save her life. She can't. She can't tell the truth. The investigator even said at one point, because she was supposed to be, get this one, he comes back in, with, they're going back and forth with these phones, right? And this is really ticking me off because I'm like, when he goes, he goes, I'm going to have to take pictures, listen to this, take pictures of the text because the thing we have to download it, it's not working. It's not working. So I have to take pictures, pictures of them. So she goes, you want me just to send you screenshots? And at first he's like, no, like, because he thinks she means, like, when she, she goes, I'll do it right here, you can watch me. And then he goes, you see, so she's sending him, you know those texts that you see in the discovery? She sent him those by screenshot, okay? So they're looking at those, they're looking at those screenshots. Now I'm like, I can't even believe this, you, you've you got to be kidding me, right? Colorado Bureau of Investigations, you, you have to be kidding me that, that this is how you're going to get this information, okay? And then they keep her phone, so I don't know what else, but that's what they had, okay? So he goes, she goes, you see how they don't make sense? And this is exactly how they don't make sense to any of us, right? So she goes, what is this pounding fruit? And she goes, oh yeah, because that's because he was at the, the birthday party with his kids, and he thought they were going to have meat. Uh, and they didn't, and so he ate fruit and asparagus, and that's what that was about. And then she's like, but the dates are wrong, because look, and he goes, what is this one like? Oh, they're going to be so freaked out if they knew, you know, you know that one on the 13th. And she goes, yeah, but that's not really on the 13th. And um, I think that what that's about, it's about his kids, because, you know, like, I see cute things. I sent him a picture, and I saw a box of Lucky Charms, and I sent him a picture. Saw a box of Lucky Charms, and that's what that's about. And then she's going on and on how that's not on the 13th. There's no way that's on the 13th. And I know it looks funny, but it's really about the Lucky Charms. And then he says something, and she goes, Oh, well, you mean, oh, it, it is right, it is on the right date? Hmm. But none of this stuff makes sense. There's a whole bunch of stuff missing. How would that happen? Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have deleted. I feel so bad that I'm not helping you. And then he's like, oh, you're helping us. Oh, I feel so bad. I shouldn't have deleted everything. I just got so upset. And he goes, hey, I understand you got so upset, but are you sure that you didn't delete anything because, you know, it could be harmful to you? No, 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 no. It's not that. I just, I don't know. I just deleted everything. Yeah. But, I would, you know, Tammy would have been like, yeah. And what were the Google searches? Or can cops recover deleted text messages? And how long do phone companies keep text messages? What did you do that for if you were just hurt by all that? What did you do that for if you really want to help the police? Why did you wait so long to come in? Because you needed to process this? 
Does it, I mean, did it really take that long? And then you don't even think your friend processed what she processed and you lied to us right here? I mean, this girl, so then she goes, you know, I lost my job and she's telling me I lost my job and I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I can get some unemployment, but it might take five or ten years. Could you help me with a name change? And he's like, no, we can't do a name change for you. That's a legal thing. I mean, I could get you some information on it, but you've got to do it legally. You know, you've got to get a lawyer. And he goes, you know, people get married, they change their names. So maybe you could go to, like, the town hall or something, right? And she goes, but wouldn't that be, is that going to be, like, public? Wouldn't that, like, be public? That wouldn't, you know, that would defeat, he goes, I, I really don't know. He goes, you, you know, you're going to have to find out about that. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. And he's like, but your name hasn't even come out yet. And she's like, yeah, not yet, though. But, you know, it's been four days. It's going to come out. Everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to know who I am. Um, yeah. And then she goes, will the media be able to find me where I am? And he goes, well, you know, it's not going to be hard to find you. I mean, if you're staying, especially in a property that your family has any, um, you know, anything to do with, your family's connected with that at all, or if someone that you, you know, someone that you know is, it's not going to be hard for anybody to find you. And she's like, oh, okay. And he's like, but, you know, I mean, he goes, it's, it's, you know, it's making the rounds, but it's not really, I mean, it's national, but it's not really like well over the world yet. <laughs> right? Little did he know how big this case would be. And um, so he's just like telling her that. And he's like, you know, now is the time to go out with your friend because, you know, nobody, go, go out with uh, Charlotte, go have a, you know, go out to dinner or something. And then he says there's this woman, Hazel, that's working with her on getting her, like, I don't know, helping her out, I guess, with mental health and, and other things. Now, I did notice something weird. If you ever see, and this is public, it's like my life. You know that my life, and it tells you about a person. Well, if you look, and you know it's the mistress because her father's name is the same, and the sister's name is the same, and all the information is the same, but she must be changing her my life because her my life, well, it gives her name, and I believe it gives her right birthday, but it says she's an African-American, says she is single now, but has three children. And I thought that was really eerie, the three children. Almost like, you know, I don't know, that was just really eerie to read. And then, you know, I went to her sister's, and her sister's was Caucasian, and her father was, was Caucasian, and it said, so she's going in there and tweaking stuff, to say she's single, she has three kids, you know, the age was right, everything. And like I said, the relatives were right. The locations were right. So she's trying to, I guess, change things. But you, I mean, that's public knowledge. You can go to my life and, and go see it. So, you know, I don't know. She, she's changing something that's public information that has her, her name on it, I, you know, that is available to anybody. So when Hazel comes in, okay, Hazel comes in for a while and she's telling Hazel how she was fired and maybe she could get some unemployment and, you know, she didn't know what she's going to do, you know, and all of this stuff, right? And then so Hazel's saying, well, you know, can't you go to this temp agency and maybe it's not going to be what you want? And then she's like, oh, I can't believe this. I finally had the job of my dreams and now it's all ruined and I don't want to work on an oil rig anymore. And I wanted to be, she said something, in the field and I had the job of my dreams. All of this, you know, poor, poor, poor me. Um, and, then, and then so Hazel said, well, why are you saying, like, nobody, maybe just go to a new state, or, or the cop, one of them said it, and she said, oh, but they're all going to know me, and that's when they were saying, the case isn't that big yet, your name hasn't even come out, okay, your name hasn't come out yet. Go and get a job, stop, you know, sitting here feeling sorry for yourself, and she made it sound, I guess, to Hazel, like, oh, I'm just going to coast, I'm going to get some unemployment, and, and this and that, and she said, you know, it would probably be better for you, I think, if you got back to work. So she's like, oh, yeah, but I don't think I'm, you know, she's already, she's one of those people, you, you ask, they ask you for advice, you give it to them, and then they have an excuse for every single thing you say. So that's exactly what she was doing to this Hazel, okay? And then even Hazel's like, well, I could help you make 
some type of employment calls and you know and then finally Hazel just like I've got another appointment because I guess she she you know and Hazel's Hazel not stupid she sees where this is going so she goes I have another appointment I'm I'm going to go out and then the investigator comes back in and she gives the same sob story about the job and she says oh and I was saving money for a house and he goes well at least you have that. She goes, yeah, you're right. But he was telling her too, like, he's like, oh, just move to another state. That's what he goes, hey, move to another state. They're not going to know you there. Move to another state. Your name hasn't even come out. And she's like, oh, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. I check every day. It's just a matter of time before my name comes out. They're going on and on with her phone. And she gives him a Verizon call log on a zip drive, okay? And then he says, oh, I'll call you when I have your phone back. But I'm busy next week. And... Um, I'll call you and oh you don't need to give me the phone back no we're gonna give you the phone back oh and get this one guys she when she gives him the zip drive this is another thing that I would just be like yeah right she goes I could only get you I think she said something like July to I don't know what she goes I couldn't get you anything like past this I think it was like on the crucial days okay she goes, because they haven't billed me at Verizon. I have a Verizon wireless account, okay, honey. She goes, they haven't billed me, and they have it on this. Um, well, I could get I could get it for you. I could get those other dates that you need. But right now, these are those, because these are on like a PDF or something. And the other ones, okay, and remember this not tech-savvy girl, okay? The other dates you need, I'm going to have to get them to you next month. They haven't billed me yet, and if I go online, they have them in a, uh, what she says here, if I gave it to you now, they don't have it in this, like, PDF that's on the here now. They have it in a janky file, you know, one that you can go in and manipulate the data. She actually said that to the cop. One that you can go in and manipulate the data. Hmm. She really seems like a schemer, doesn't she? Put your phone on, you know, record the conversation. If your wife comes home, I don't know how the messages got deleted. I don't know what happened. I don't know why they're not making sense anymore. I don't know how to get them back. I'm so sorry. No, they only have a janky file, you know, one that you can go in and manipulate the data on. So can you go in and manipulate the data on and then it gets put on the PDF? What is she talking about? Those are such red flags for me. I would like not just stop there. You know, I would stop there and I would be like, whoa, a janky file you can manipulate the data on. But this guy just goes right over that. He does go back and forth over and over that. Did you ever say you wish he didn't have kids? Did you ever say you wish he didn't have kids you know he he does he does go over that with her and again she keeps going oh i'm so sorry about the text this really sucks this sucks that this happened i don't know how it happened do you know how it happened i don't know how it happened i don't know why they're not coming back and then the guy comes in okay the other guy and he says we need your google you have to sign into your google your your gmail account in order to transfer your contacts, do you know your Gmail account login? No. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Well, then you're not going to be able to do it. I could get you a printout of all your contacts. Oh, could you? That would be so helpful. Thank you. And he's like, but you're not going to be able to switch any of them over. Well, maybe when I get home, I can play around and, you know, create a new one or something, okay? I'll try that when I get home. The printout is fine. So she says she's so upset. She's never been terminated from a job before. She's so, so upset at this. They had promised her they were not going to let her go. And then they called her in and said they were going to let her go. And like I said, the other company that she works for that contracts her said that because her contract was terminated, they terminated her. And then she said to Hazel, but they're going to give me like a couple of weeks of, of like pay or something you know like she didn't know like she couldn't say a severance package she's just so clueless or, or just pretending she's so you know ignorant so she, so then Hazel's like well that's good and she's like yeah I guess and she mumbles mumble 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 she keeps mumbling through this whole interview well then she says 
I have a lot of friends that will give me a referral, but I can't do that because then they're going to find out who I am and then my friend's going to get really mad. And then Hazel's like, why? I mean, just, you know, why don't you just do that then? Go get the referral and then, you know, you'll talk to the employer if you get the job. And she was like, no, I can't do that because I can't ask my friends for a referral. And then um, they're going to find out, like, who I am and what happened. And then she said something about she's feeling overwhelmed. And then she said something like someone in the media or something left her a, a letter. They didn't even know who she was, but it was crumpled up. And it, they asked for an interview and it, it was on, like, scrapbook paper, she said. And then she said, you know, something like... I don't know what to do. I'm so overwhelmed. So Hazel said, you have to take care of yourself. That's the only person you have to take care of. You have to take care of yourself. Someday, you know, you can take care of others. But right now, you just have to take care of yourself. And are you thinking about suicide at all or anything like that? And she said no. And she did say something about the Witness Protection Program. And the investigator said, the Witness Protection Program? No. That's very, 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 very rare. And for something like this, it's not going to happen. And then either he or she said, well, yeah, because he's in jail, right? And he can't come in, uh, and get me. So, you know, it was protection from Chris that she's talking about, okay? Because she goes, yeah, because he's there. And he's like, yeah, and he's staying there. And, it, you know, it, you're not going to get witness protection program. She didn't know at this time that he was taking a plea deal, remember? Okay? She thought at this time there was a trial. So then she goes, I have jury duty on September 17th. Um, am I still going to be able to do that with all this? And the investigator's like, yes. Have you ever gone to jury duty? You're just going to go there and you're going to answer a bunch of questions. They might not even pick you. And then he says again, you know, there is a potential concern that we have that you deleted everything. Is it something you're going to be charged with now? No. But you have to understand it raises some reasonable concern for us why you deleted all of this. Even though... We can understand what you're saying. It does raise a reasonable amount of concern. You know, she's mentioned something about the kids. And she said something like, well, you know, when she was saying that they were like her or something, she's like, you know, well, they're the kids. They were like, they were like my sister and I when they were going through a divorce. Like when we were going through a divorce, they're going through a divorce. And it's like, they weren't going through a divorce because... They hadn't even filed for separation, hon. You know, and she's still telling the officer, well, as if she had met the kids, and, you know, well, they're just like her, and then they're going through a divorce, and, and so this is what she was doing. She was trying to, like, help them through this divorce. And then the, the, uh, the agent says to her, the investigator, is Charlotte a lesbian? And she goes, no, why would you say that? And he goes, don't you remember our first interview at the park? I know you told me that she was a lesbian. And she goes, no, and he goes, well then, did you say another one of your friends was a lesbian? And now, I don't know whether he's insinuating that there was some type of a three-way deal, okay? And that's how Charlotte knows Chris. I don't know where he was going with this, and I don't know if I saw that line of questioning. I, I, I know I didn't see that line of questioning. If any of you did, let me know. But he goes, there's no one, that, not one of your close friends that was a lesbian that you mentioned to me? And then she's like... No, 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 I ne no, no, she has a boyfriend. I'm wondering if he thinks that Charlotte was involved with the two of them in some type of a three-way deal. She's like, I really want you to have the full text. I don't know what's going on. Oh, and she was, when she was trying to tell him how much she loved the kids and that she had seen the kids in the pictures and, oh, little Cece, little Cece, you know, he called her, she said he called her something, or, with an R. I can't think of the name right now. He said he called her that. Oh, it was so cute because like they remind me so much of myself and my sister when we were going through the divorce. And she said, you know, this shocked me. This didn't shock everybody. This shocked me. I had no idea this was going to happen. I had no idea this was going to happen. She goes, I was thinking, let her F and go. Meaning Shanann. Listen to this one, okay? When she's trying to say, let her F and go. She'll come back in a day when she feels better. Well, she He fooled everyone, she said. And you know, he told me too. I didn't know. I just thought, you know, she was angry. And I thought, let her F and go. She'll be back in a day. So anyway, I don't know what they're doing with all of those missing texts. We know there's so many texts. Sorry. We know there's so many texts that are missing. 
we know this. I mean, it's just so aggravating. Where are these texts? Do they have these texts? And I hope that, you know, that they've got I hope that somehow maybe they have the text somewhere. In the Discovery, you can see like encrypted messages. Have you guys seen that? And I'm wondering if it's something of the text that they found or some of those attachments or text that they found on her phone. And I really, really hope so because it's, it's driving me crazy because we know there's other texts, they know there's other texts, and there's got to be a way to get those texts. And maybe... Like I said, if the investigation is continuing, if they're not done with her, and you know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot, some people have come on the comments and say, it's a done deal, okay? They've got their killer. I mean, it's not a done deal. They're mistaking that if someone is tried for murder and they're exonerated, they're found not guilty, they cannot be tried again, okay? That's double indemnity. But Someone like the mistress has never been tried, and that's that Florida case that I referenced. That, that was a closed case. They thought the husband was eaten by alligators, and then the, one, the wife and her new husband, who, were, who was the friend, they were in on that murder, right? And I guess the man couldn't take it. After 18 years, he couldn't take it. So 18 years later, he went forward which implicated the accomplice, the wife. This is what I mean. People talk, you know, sooner or later. And they tried her, and she was found guilty. And he was found guilty. So please stop saying that, oh, it's a closed case. Nothing can be done. It's not true. It's not true. If they have more evidence, if they get more evidence, if someone comes forward and says, you know what? I have this evidence. I have this text message. I have this recorded conversation that shows something. Yes, and let's bring that back to Patrick Frazee, okay, because he had a hearing today, and he was charged on different counts of murder, felony murder, and they said, well, what is one of the felony murders? Well, it means a murder that happened during a robbery, okay? So now it's looking, this case is going to be unbelievable, okay, because they said, there's going to be more coming out. There's another hearing about this. And the prosecution said, you know, they can't put out all the evidence, but there's a lot of it. So not only does he have that solicitation of murder, but now he's got this felony murder, which is like murder that happens during a robbery. So he was either maybe making it look like a robbery and she got killed. I don't know. I'm telling you guys, this case is going to be filled with twists and turns. So... Yes, and he looked like he took a shower today. His hair was washed, and it was brushed, and he did not look at the disheveled mess that he looked the last time in court. His mother was there. She looked really angry. Anyway, um, we'll see more about that case. I've rambled on way long enough. Happy New Year, everybody, and I don't know. I just, I just want to get through that because it's really difficult listening to her, and she's all over the place. But that's that, and, you know, we'll see what happens there, and I think I will start taking a look at other pieces because I need a break. I need a break from her uh, interviews. <laughs> okay? Have a good one, guys. Take care.